वेलकम टू मनी 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 योर वीकली पर्सनल फाइनेंस डेट विद मी सुरभि उपाध्याय नाउ योर पीएफ प्लान मे हैव द बेस्ट स्टॉक्स एंड ऑल द राइट म्यूचुअल फंड्स बट इट वुड बी अ कंप्लीट नॉन स्टार्टर इफ इट डजंट कवर द बेसिक नीड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल प्लानिंग प्रोटेक्शन एंड रिस्क मिटिगेशन यस वी आर टॉकिंग इंश्योरेंस द ग्रोथ ऑफ डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी मे हैव मेड इट इजीयर टू बाय इंश्योरेंस ऑनलाइन बट द टफ पार्ट इज टू नो व्हाट टू बाय what product is right for you what is the checklist that you need to keep in mind before buying life or health insurance and what are your rights as a policy holder well we will answer those questions on money 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 over the next few weeks with a special insurance series and we kick it off today with life insurance my guests on the show are our financial planning expert harshvardhan rungta as well as rahul agrawal of idle insurance brokers and man thanks so much for joining us on the show today uh, you know it's a very important subject that we're dealing with because insurance penetration levels still low in the country people are still not very aware about how to buy the right piece of insurance so um, let me start uh, harsh by you know simply outlining the type of life insurance policies are there so many names get thrown in the air endowment money back you lips term plans it gets very confusing for the first time buyer so why don't you start with the basics i would compliment you surbhi because you've chosen to talk about a topics which is life insurance now uh, we must understand as you rightly said no personal finance portfolio is complete without having adequate insurance so now let's talk about life insurance that we spoke about now what are the different kind of policies that are available so by and large if we have to just uh, you know categorize all different kind of products into five or two or four or five categories the first one would be pure protection plans so these are called term plans in life insurance parlance mm-hmm. these are nothing but a simple life cover given to you there is a cost which is in the form of premium that you're paying and you get a li- you enjoy a life cover mm-hmm. the other category are savings based so one element that one product that is available we could bifurcate them into two elements mm-hmm. the first is traditional platform which is non ulips yeah. for a simple understanding mm-hmm. purposes so under the traditional savings based products you would have endowment policies you would have money back policies you would have uh, whole life policies okay. so these would come under the traditional savings based investment oriented policies okay fair enough so those are i mean the broad overarching sort of distinctions between the policies rahul let me come to you as well because that is the real big debate about life insurance particularly should you only be buying insurance to protect yourself or should you also be looking at simultaneous investments you know that's the big debate within you know buyers and the financial planning community what's your own take on it according to me insurance is only term insurance right when we talk about what is insurance right so term insurance is the only product which actually covers risk rest of the products yes they give you some cover but the principal idea is saving so when it comes to saving there are multiple products available in the market it can be ulips it can be endowment whole life mm-hmm. but for me insurance means term insurance mm-hmm. right that's the first thing anyone should look at mm-hmm. when you're you know going out and buying do you agree with that harsh i mean when you're looking at life insurance uh, typically do you also like term insurance the most or for you uh, you know some of the savings products also make sense well uh, if talking about risk coverage there is no other product better than a term plan which mm-hmm. provides you the adequate coverage mm-hmm. let's understand this with an example person has been identified to buy a 1 crore life cover if he buys a term plan the cost would be very low it could be say probably a 10000 rupees for a 30 35 year old individual if he buys a savings based product mm-hmm. the premium the cost of premium will go up to more than 5 or 6 lakhs right so the question is are you able to pay 5 to 10 lakhs for that matter for a mm-hmm. coverage of 1 crore wherein you could have got the same cover at 10000 rupees so from a planning perspective it's very very clear i mean the term plan is probably the cleanest and simplest product to understand to buy because you know the cover you're getting typically pretty large cover and your your payout is around 10000 15000 rupees per year depending on of course age and profile but the fact of life is that we do have these savings products they're still being very aggressively sold in the market i mean whether you have retirement plans child plans, plans single women working women plans when I mean, they come with different names so now let's start drilling down in terms of understanding them and also figuring out their merits and demerits so rahul now if i i'm going to force you to actually look at the other side the savings product side as well and now let's uh, go step by step so talk about endowment uh, and whether that's a product that you like or not insurance is a forced saving it's a long term commitment there's no other product you know where you have a you are tied up for 20 years so once you commit to insurance you tend to save for 20 years right so of course saving is an important tool but what i meant was term insurance is definitely the first priority mm-hmm. now coming to the uh, savings based product right i would suggest there are some advantages in actually having a child product because what happens in most of the products for children if god forbid something happens to the father 
right? So it's a normal savings plan. Mm -hmm. But if something happens to the father, the premium stops and the child still gets the money at the end of the tenure of the policy. So when we talk about mm -hmm. the non-risk oriented mm -hmm. risk protection mm -hmm. plans, then then there's the whole gamut of investment oriented yeah. policy. So let's understand what is an endowment plan. Mm -hmm. So you've taken an insurance policy for a 20 year period for which you're paying, for example, a 50,000 rupees per annum. Mm -hmm. If nothing happens to you at the end of 20 years, the whatever accumulation and your bonuses and your final addition bonuses, whatever accumulation has happened is paid out to you in one lump sum. Okay. So that's an endowment plan. Mm -hmm. In case you take another form of an endowment plan, which is a money back policy, it's mm -hmm. a savings based pro product. Mm -hmm. However, the, the payout is not given at the end of 20 years in one lump sum, but it is given to you at regular intervals. It could be every five years, there's a certain portion of money comes mm -hmm. back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, then there are whole life plans. Mm -hmm. The whole life plans are essentially designed for, for legacy purposes. Like you buy an insurance policy, you're covered up till age 80 or 100, and the money is paid only after demise. So, so the there is no payout during your lifespan. Absolutely. So okay. that's the intent. So whenever okay. uh, anything happens to the insured person, mm -hmm. the money is given to the nominee. Okay. So which could be the child, which could be the wife, anybody else. The difference here being, I mean, it, it sort of sounded like a term plan to me, but the difference here is that uh, because in both the, a term plan as well as a whole life policy, the some payout is going to happen only after the demise of the insured, right? Correct. So in the mm -hmm. first case, in the term plan, mm -hmm. there is only the life or the sum insured is paid. Whereas mm -hmm. in the whole life plan, there is also an element of savings in it. Right. So there, there could be a sum insured plus there would be some bonuses which are accrued over the period of time. Okay, all right. Uh, we are only beginning with life insurance, particularly a lot of the investment oriented products that are out there in the market. We'll come back on the other side and keep getting you the fine print. Welcome back here with the insurance series on money, money, money. And this week we are talking about life insurance. So we've been discussing uh, a lot of the savings based products or investment oriented products that are offered by life insurance companies and whether they make sense for you or not. Now, the question I want to ask you, Harsh, is this. How do you know in that, uh, you know, money that you're paying every year, let's say you're paying five lakh rupees every year for a certain number of years. How much is the premium? How much is actually going into investment? Where is it being invested? So how does one figure out that? Well, should be within the investment oriented policy, there are two kinds. One is the traditional policy that we spoke about endowment, money back and the whole life plans. Mm -hmm. In these kind of policies, you go, you're paying your premium. Mm -hmm. The company decides where the money is getting invested and they follow a guideline given by IRDA. Okay. So there's an investment pattern that they have to follow. Okay. Now the other element of an investment based product is a ULIP, the unit linked insurance plans. Mm -hmm. Now these products are designed giving control of the investment in the hands of the policy holder. Sure. So when you make an investment, uh, uh, you pay a premium to the in, into the policy, mm -hmm. you also have to indicate and insure, inform the insurance company how do you want this money to be invested. Mm -hmm. So there will be certain premium allocation charges, which is the entry load in that context as a charge that the insurance company levies. So a certain portion will be deducted from the money that you've paid. Okay. Then the money gets invested in the form that the policy holder inform, tells them to do. So it could go into an equity fund, it could go in a balanced fund, it could go into a debt and there are different options which are given by the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So there you would have complete control over what is happening with your money. Sure. So Rahul, let me get you in on this. When we are discussing savings oriented or investment oriented products, ULIP being one such type, there was a point in time when they were being sold very, very aggressively by the industry. Now, not so much. But how do you rate them as a product and how do you compare them with the traditional products like a money back policy or an endowment policy? See, I find ULIPs are a very good, uh, they are mm -hmm. very good products. Uh, they got a very bad name because, uh, uh, you know, it's actually lack of awareness if you ask me. What happens in ULIPs is, you know, when you see a policy document, the charges are upfront mentioned in the ULIP. What he said, there's a loading charge, right? Yeah. So let's say in a ULIP, there's a 40 or 50 percent charge with the insurance company is taking. But what people don't know in a traditional plan, right, the charges are actually more than 100 percent. Mm -hmm. Right. The only thing is, it is not transparent mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. any policy. Sure. Be it ULIP, be it traditional, there are three components. Mm -hmm. One is the term portion, which yeah. is the risk cover portion. Right. One is the expenses of the insurance company. Third is the balance money, which goes into the savings. Right. Right. So term insurance portion is practically same for all insurance companies. Right. Okay. If it's a ten lakh rupees term cover, it's practically same for every insurance company. Mm -hmm. 
coming to the charges now this is where the catch is right in ulips they used to show very clearly the charges is 20% or 30% or 40% and that's the the portion that's going to the insurance company yes mm -hmm. right for their expenses mm -hmm. for commissions for whatever mm -hmm. management expenses now this charge is not specifically mentioned in a traditional plan where normally it is much higher than what is there in the ulip so if i'm paying let's say in a year uh, if it's a you know it's a traditional plan i'm supposed to pay mm -hmm. let's say a 5 lakh rupee premium so that's that's the breakup that i was asking for or maybe a 1 so, lakh rupee premium so, so what the, the breakup the entire is 5 lakh rupees is going towards expenses of the insurance company oh really yes it can be as bad as that okay see because if you see the long term uh, rate of return in mm. any traditional product any none of the products from any company including lsc can give you more than 5 and a half percent irr mm -hmm. okay whereas a ulip would easily give you even today 8 to 9 percent irr in a balanced fund but that's also because uh, the uh, ulip will have a higher equity exposure typically uh yes there both the factors are there because mm -hmm. in traditional plans the most of the money 95 percent of the money goes into government into bonds and securities yeah. debt market mm -hmm. where you only get 7 8 mm -hmm. percent but charges are also very important factor in that mm -hmm. right the load is much higher uh, in traditional plan compared mm -hmm. to ulips but now after this one good thing has happened is so in ulips there were high charge ulips there were low charge ulips mm -hmm. in some of the ulip products the charges were 70 to 80 percent which was criminal of course okay. now because of uh, all this you know uh, consciousness and you know the people, regulator also came yeah, down quite harshly came down, yeah. and now normally yeah. the charges are not more than 20% which is fantastic if you ask me now right. your sense on this if we are comparing all different types of savings you know products saving insurance products then what's the best bet you know when you come down to choosing a product within the insurance gamut then of course you will choose as per your uh, you know risk appetite or your you know your attitude towards investment sure the bigger question is is this the only investment option do i have mm -hmm. so while i want to take a risk coverage term plan is what i have mm -hmm. offered by an insurance sector yeah. the question is if i want to manage my own money and if i'm prudent enough to take decisions mm. can i not look at pure investment plans could be mutual funds could be even direct I, equity or you know looking at the inv other investment direct investment or absolutely avenues. i could look at ppf yeah. for that matter i could look at a recurring deposit i could look at mm. all other al elements which have nothing to do with insurance mm. what is it that i get extra when i combine the both yeah. if i have and you're paying such charges i mean even if they've come down to 20% it's still a charge yes. and it it sounds to me that it's more expensive to go through this route than to invest directly in a mutual fund that's exactly that i was trying to within yeah. the insurance gamut if you're mm -hmm. choosing then obviously you will choose as per your risk appetite and mm -hmm. your attitude towards investments mm -hmm. however if you're looking at a pure investment product there are much better or uh, you know avenues mm -hmm. however having said this you know there are certain inherent benefits of even investing in insurance policies mm -hmm. uh, you know what are those benefits so one is uh, you know if you invest into a debt product if you mm -hmm. invest in a debt fund of a mutual fund okay and you switch out or you redeem within one year tax. okay there's a tax element to it right you know you may be wanting to stay invested for more than 5 years however you as an asset allocation plan you've got say 30% into debt 17 into equity mm -hmm. however and you rebalance it after a year yeah there is a tax implication there's a tax you're implication moving your money that. around in less than in less than a year yes in okay. so there is a tax implication on mm -hmm. that however we do as many number of switches within equity to debt and back to equity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. within that year also and you it's know it's a life insurance product so you cover covered under atc i'm guessing right absolutely so yeah. there is, there's no tax tax so, implication so there is no tax okay. implication on mm -hmm. that account uh, but you covered up till the limit of 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees i mean let's not forget that and the investment much might, might be you know uh, significantly higher yeah but then you know, the issue is when you take money out after 10 years mm -hmm. whether it's going to be tax exempt or it's not going to be so within uh, the tax uh, you know insurance uh, gamut there is a there's a uh, clause which also says that the money that comes back to you is tax free fair debate and fair point and of course it's a personal call whether you want to go for term insurance or whether you also want to dabble with some of the savings and investment oriented life insurance products but something else that we are going to talk about after the break annuity as a concept and some of the riders that you can attach along with your life insurance policy we're coming back in just a bit Welcome back you're watching the life insurance special on money 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 we've discussed term plans we've discussed some of the savings products another important aspect of life insurance is retirement security how to take care of your silver years there are a number of plans that are being offered of course life insurance companies also offer what is known as the annuity so how does this product work let's ask our experts so rahul your thoughts first on the sort of annuity schemes that are being offered and whether they really make sense for an individual okay so first i'll tell you the different kind of annuity 
annuities which are there and there are primarily two kind of annuities one is a immediate annuity and one is a deferred annuity in an immediate, immediate annuity you pay a lump sum today and right from the next month or next year you start getting annuity mm -hmm. and a deferred is you know let's say you are 30 years of age you choose that I want annuity from age 50 mm -hmm. so you pay some premium till age 50 and then mm. you know you start getting annuity uh, after age 50 you get a monthly income monthly then after income that, that or annual age. income after that yeah, yeah. now having said that I'm not personally a fan of annuity uh, policies because a couple of reasons one they do not offer too much of cover so okay. any any product which does not offer too much of cover I don't find you know it should be a part of life insurance mm -hmm. right second uh, from the tax perspective also so life insurance all the other products are completely tax free okay. but in annuity only a certain portion is tax free the rest of the money is taxable mm -hmm. right and third point uh, even the returns are lesser than a normal product okay right? because they're much more regulation since you know mm -hmm. it's more of a retirement mm -hmm. kind of fund mm -hmm. so they're much more regulation which are attached to it by the government yes mm -hmm. the idea is for retirement so you cannot play around with the money but mm -hmm. still uh, you know I, I don't find it a very great product to be sold by the mm -hmm. insurance companies so uh, harsh again if you're talking about the deferred annuity product again now here is an individual who'll have to think now i'm 30 something uh, i am trying to buy a product which is giving me life cover should i also buy a product which will start paying me back automatically that annuity kicks in once i hit 58 or, or 60 does that product make sense to you so so if you take over from what Rahul said about the structure of the annuity mm -hmm. so you are say 30 for example and you start contributing a certain amount every year so that is nothing but an investment mm -hmm. okay this at the age of 58 or 60 when you're going to retire becomes a large corpus mm. as per the annuity rules you're allowed to withdraw a certain portion of that not the entire amount your right. money is locked in right so you're allowed to withdraw one third of that and take it as a lump sum mm -hmm. post which the balance amount is retained by the insurance company and there are se several different insure you know annuity options offered to you but let me stop you there and ask you a fundamental question from the age of 30 today till the age of 58 every time that I'm giving money to I mean I'm just thinking in terms of wealth building or creating wealth building a bigger corpus where is this money going what form of investment is it getting invested in because I mean I also have the option of putting a lot of it into equity and hopefully building a much better co corpus absolutely you're absolutely yeah. right because if you choose a traditional policy which is a deferred annuity then mm -hmm. the money goes in as per the formula which is given by IRDA mm -hmm. if you choose a ULIP based pension policy mm -hmm. in that also there is a restriction because you cannot take a, a equity exposure beyond X amount right. which is usually usually 50% right so why because the money is being used for the you know for retirement a, safe for, keeping yeah so yeah, the regulator yeah. has made it mandatory mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. cannot invest the entire money into equity even if the policy holder wants it even if you're starting young even if you've bought that policy from 30 years onwards so ideally for yeah, a people yeah. for a person who's young and wants to take that exposure into mm -hmm. equities 100% equities then he should rather go into equity mutual funds okay. build that corpus on your own okay and use it for whatever purpose you can put it into a fixed deposit and get interest you mm -hmm. buy a property get rent on it mm -hmm. so the rent that you get post retirement mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. be annuity for that Matter. Might as well look at active money management then rather than sort of taking in these products. But anyway, gentlemen, uh, some final thoughts and some important issues. Riders, the add-ons that I can attach to yes. my life insurance policy. What are these options and are they sensible? So there are quite a few riders. Uh, most prominent amongst them are three riders. One is the personal accident rider, mm -hmm. right? So where if, if anything happens because of accident, the person, the family gets some more money. Right. Second is a critical illness rider, where again, if uh, you know any critical illness like a cancer or a kidney transplant or heart attack happens, then again you get a lump sum money. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the sum in short for the critical. Sure. Third is a waiver of premium. Right, which I mentioned about in children policy. Mm -hmm. If something happens to the father, the premium is waived, but the child continues to get the same amount of policy. Mm -hmm. uh, now, waiver of premium is, of course, a very uh, good concept. When you policy. mentioned uh, the premium waiver rider, which yes. is available and it helps, uh, so what sort of policies are we talking about? Because in the event that there is a demise, there will be a payout there and then. So again, there are different kind of products in that. In some products, mm -hmm. if something happens to the father, mm -hmm. there's some money which is given to the family okay in some products there's no money is given to the uh, family right the policy away. continues the policy continues okay. no premium is paid but money is given at the you know when the child is 18 or 20 or 22 that time only okay okay we spoke about waiver of premium so there's a dependent child hmm. so if the insurance is on the child on the life on the life of the child ideally it should not be but in hmm. case you bought a policy in which the child is the insured hmm. and the and he's and the the premium is being paid by the parent oh then you definitely need that waiver yeah, yeah so just in, in case yeah, yeah in case the parent yeah. is not there hmm. but the insurance policy is still active because it is on the life of the child right so in that case you need to take a waiver of premium absolutely and last 
question to both of you. Uh, the instructions or the tips or the directions that you'd like to give our viewers in terms of while they're buying the policy, doing the paperwork, making the disclosures, what can one do to make sure that you buy the right policy and get your claim settled most importantly? I think, Rahul. I think it's the most important point you have yeah. highlighted because, you know, we see a lot of claims getting rejected because of some small... Uh, you can say mistake, you can say uh, wrong guidance by the agents. For example, let's say I'm a smoker, right? And if I uh, click that I'm a non-smoker and tomorrow if something happens, mm. right, the claim can be rejected. Because the company right? will find out, invariably they the will find out. out. Yeah, they yeah. do. Or for example, let's say I have, uh, I'm suffering from BP or sugar. Mm. Now these are conditions which can be suppressed, mm. right, for a temporary period of time. So if I go for a medical and if I hide that I have sugar and tomorrow if I have a heart attack and I die of sugar, my family would not get the claim. Mm. Right? Or similar easier examples is let's say alcohol. Mm. Somebody who has alcohol, it may be even in small quantity, it's always better to disclose whatever is right. Mm. Right? Even if the policy gets rejected, better it get rejected. Mm. It, it's better than you know the claim getting rejected. Right. right? Lot of uh, you know, intermediaries, agents, they will brag, you know, you don't, you disclose, don't disclose all this, otherwise yeah. your policy will get rejected, right? Yeah. So don't fall into the trap, right? right? Absolutely, whatever is correct, be it mm. good for you, be it bad for you, but it's very important to mm. have 100% right disclosure in the policy to get the claim. Harsh, final thoughts? Well, continuing from there, so the, uh, the idea is that the time of taking the policy disclosures, so it's, you know, all your disclosures need to be made. And that can happen only when you fill the form yourself. Mm. So as much as it may be painful and maybe I'm running into multiple pages, try and fill the form yourself. Right. Even if you don't fill the form, at least ask your you know advisor or your agent for that matter that after it is filled, show it to me before mm. submitting it. So okay. that's, you know, you might not actually physically fill it up, but at least see it once before it is being filled. Mm. Even that is, if you're not even doing that, when the policy document comes in your hand, as per IIDA guidelines, the insurance company is supposed to attach a copy of the proposal form that you have filled in. Mm. So at least at that point in time, have a look at it, whether all the disclosures have been made. Now, even if you've not done it within that period, then if your claim is rejected, then I think it is well deserved. Because, you know, there is no point in being so dependent on, you know, your intermediaries and not even giving that five or ten minutes of your time sure. to look into a document which is, has so much of a financial implication. Okay. So, that is one part. Now, after you get the policy in your hand, there is a 15 days grace period wherein you can go through the terms of the policy. Because we've seen invariably a number of cases wherein you have asked your, you know, you've been rather told that this is a single premium. But however, when you fill the form, it has been made as an annual premium. So the uh -huh. whatever you think has to be made the single premium and no more commitment, it mm -hmm. actually becomes your annual commitment for the next 20 years. Right. So just go through that policy documents, with especially mm -hmm. the schedule. The first page mm -hmm. at least tells you what your you know, entitlement mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And you may not go into the fine print if you don't wish to. Sure. But these are the basic hygiene elements that you need to take care of. Once Absolutely. you're done with this, then I think you should be safe. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen, thanks so much for taking out the time. The takeaway is very clear. Be a little alert. Be a little aware. Spend the time to read that policy document. It could be a very, very critical document in your life. That's it from the team. Thank you so much for being with us on this week's episode of Money, Money, Money. Of course, we would always appreciate your response, uh, any feedback or queries that you may have. Our email ID is on the screen.